Hi everyone, and welcome to this dedicated tutorial byte, Froxia Not Included, where I'm going to look more closely at plant mutations in the Spaced Out DLC. Now, I didn't originally intend to make this video, and I covered the mutations in brief in the plant's tutorial byte, and was hoping that would be enough. The reason for that was because I didn't think plant mutations were very good or worth doing, but I've since had so many requests to cover the details that I'm now making this video. So starting with the basics, plant mutations are only available in the Spaced Out DLC because they are caused by radiation. Each plant has a radiation limit, and if the radiation is too high, then the plants won't grow, and here is the limit of every plant. But below this limit, when a plant is harvested, it has a chance to drop a mutated seed instead of a normal one. So that does also mean that only harvestable plants can mutate, and not decorative or utility plants. The chance for a mutation to happen is calculated at the point of harvest only, and the maximum chance you can get is 80%, if the plant has its maximum allowed radiation. At any value below this, then the mutation chance is calculated as the fraction of the plant's maximum radiation times 80%. So for example, a mealwood's maximum radiation limit is 4,600 rads, and if exposed to 2,300 rads when harvested, that's half of 80%. So it gives a 40% mutated seed chance. If I pick a slightly more random number, say 750 rads, then we divide this by the 4600 max, and then multiply it by 80% to get a 13% chance. It's also worth noting here that plants have a base seed drop chance, which for most plants is 10% when harvested, but with obvious exceptions for the plants that make seeds as their harvest, i.e. sleet wheat and nosh sprouts. Of course, if a plant is harvested and doesn't drop a seed, then you definitely can't get a mutated one. So remember that a dupe's agriculture skill increases the seed drop chance by 10% per level. That means you will want your best farmers to be harvesting when trying to get mutated seeds. In practice then, making mutated seeds means putting plants in an environment with radiation and harvesting them. There are a number of ways to do this, and I covered most of them in the Radbolt tutorial bite. Space radiation is a simple but low level way to get some radiation. And crash satellites are another good way to use natural features to your advantage, and give quite a lot of rads, but few maps have this world trait. The other way to get high levels of radiation is next to a nuclear reactor, even with an insulating wall in between. For a full guide to building and running nuclear reactors, see the dedicated tutorial bite. Then for more controllable ways, there are radiation lamps and wheeze warts. Radiation lamps take uranium ore and power to make radiation, and wheeze warts need to be fertilised with phosphorite to grow. The benefit of these methods is that they can both be disabled until a dupe comes by to harvest the plants, saving resources. To do this, I've used a motion sensor to detect dupes, and wired this into the radiation lamps directly. For the wheeze warts, we can use planter boxes on doors that close when a dupe is nearby. So again, a motion sensor is used, but with a knot gate to close the door when a dupe is inside. So having covered the radiation, we also need to think about the plants themselves. We will need to make a suitable environment for whatever plant we're trying to mutate, and see my plants tutorial bite and full series for more details. But generally insulated walls and a liquid lock are useful for many plants. The other thing here is protecting dupes in high radiation areas, and radiation suits and rad pills may be useful, as any farmers will likely get quite a high radiation dose inside, especially for crashed satellites or nuclear reactors. Both of these measures will help protect dupes, but I would also additionally recommend automating the fertilisation with hydroponic tiles for liquids and auto sweepers and receptacles for solids. Doing this means dupes are only needed for harvesting, not fertilising, so reduces their risk further. Then, once a mutated seed is harvested, it starts with an unknown mutation. In order to find out which mutation it has, you need to use the Botanical Analyzer, which needs a dupe with the improved Farming 2 skill to use. Once finished, you'll find out exactly which mutation you have. And finally, with that identified mutated seed, you can plant it. Note that all mutated plants then also need to live in an environment with radiation, in addition to their normal requirements and any changes made by the mutations. This makes them a little tricky to grow, especially in large numbers, because you'll need a constant radiation source for the plants, for example wheeze warts or shine bugs. Therefore mutated plants are always more difficult to farm. Also beware that mutated plants do not make any new seeds either, except for sleet wheat and nosh sprout. Another way to make a radiation environment for wild planting is by solidifying nuclear waste. This works because solid nuclear waste tiles are radioactive themselves, meaning this is a great long-term solution you can leave in place. 
To do this, you need to make the nuclear waste in a research reactor, or from collecting the nuclear fallout from a Radbalt engine in a rocket tunnel, which I covered in the rocket tunnel tutorial bite. Then this needs to be cooled into a solid in the correct pattern for wild farming, which I explained in the wild farming and pit planting tutorial bite. The main problem with this method is that it takes a long time, because each tile needs to be over 1,500 kilograms of nuclear waste to form a solid tile and not debris, which means it takes quite a while to make enough nuclear waste, and also a long time to cool it down into a solid. Also because nuclear waste normally makes 4 tiles of 1000 kilograms, you'll need to make 5 tiles of 1000 kilograms, and then squeeze them into 3 tiles with corner building. And then another problem is the temperatures, as solid nuclear waste melts back into a liquid at only 30 degrees Celsius. So if you want to do a mutated farm like this for a hotter plant, then it may be necessary to use very small gas layers to block heat transfer, but still keep the plants growing but this is quite an advanced topic. Going into the mutations then, in total there are 10 possible mutations which I'm showing here. All of these except blooming come with both an advantage and disadvantage, and have different potential uses. I've also given my opinion on whether these are worth doing, and on balance there are some that could be useful. Please bear in mind that this section includes a lot of my personal opinion, based on the numbers and my experience, so if you don't agree then feel free to share your opinions in the comments. Really though, all of these come down to getting more harvest per plant, meaning you would need fewer plants for the same output. Starting at the bottom, in my opinion there are three clearly bad mutations, of Blooming, Wildish and Lysi. Blooming is unnecessary for the decor, Wildish has no efficiency benefit, and Lysi just adds meal lice at the cost of more fertilizer. Given that meal wood can be farmed with just dirt, which is easy to get renewably with pips, I don't see this plant mutation as an easier way than just using meal wood. The other seven then all give more harvest output per fertilizer, except for juicy fruit which really benefits wild plants, as you should be harvesting domestic plants with dupes anyway to not waste fertilizer. In all cases, this means you could use fewer plants, and if domestically farmed, then potentially less fertilizer too. So in my opinion, the best mutations are super specialized and specialized, because assuming you control the temperature, for example with a precise cooling loop, then this literally gives free extra resources up to double the amount. Exuberant is also quite strong, giving extra rock piles and quite a bit of extra harvest per fertilizer, and similarly easygoing gives up to 50% extra for domestic plants. Juicy fruit, as I mentioned, is not bad for wild plants, but the improvement you get depends on the growth cycle, with shorter growth cycle plants getting more benefit, and also assumes you aren't dupe harvesting the plants in the first place. And lastly, Bountiful and Leafy give a decent increase at the cost of some lighting, which isn't too difficult to achieve with lamps, but these will heat up farms slowly, and will need some cooling over longer periods. So overall these benefits are quite good on paper, and many of the mutated versions are objectively better than the normal unmutated variants. The question really lies in the trade-off with the other disadvantages. Remember that you must get these mutated seeds in the first place, which needs a good radiation source and quite a lot of time assuming you don't use a seed duplication exploit. During this process you have no control over which variant you get, and the variants themselves do not drop new seeds, so to get enough seeds for a mid to large sized farm requires quite a lot of time. Then there's a the radiation growing requirement, which can be a bit of a pain to set up too. In the plants tutorial bite, my overall statement was that I didn't think on balance it was worth farming mutated plants because of these reasons. I must say that in going over the numbers more carefully, the benefits are stronger than I thought, but I don't think there's a clear winner here. For me, still, there are too many disadvantages for me to bother, and the large amount of time and effort it takes to get the seeds and grow them is really the main factor for me. But I think it's fair to say that using mutated plants is not an outright bad decision and there are definitely arguments for why you might want to farm them, especially for space reasons. So the answer to the question, is it worth it, is really up to you. Whatever you decide, I hope that this has helped you understand the reasons why or why not to grow mutated plants, so you can make that decision for yourself, and thanks for watching.